Hello and good evening. Sorry about the audio problem over there. Um, so we are live again and hopefully this time it will work fine. I'm, I'm actually like, let's, let's go ahead with this first now. Okay, good evening. We will wait for the viewers to again join back. Uh, sorry for that small glitch where the audio had issues. Hopefully now it's going to be fine. And yes, Saran, Rakesh, holy moly guys, everyone, a very, very good evening. Uh, so this is the first time I'm actually doing a YouTube live and uh, I've been experimenting with it in the past but uh, not been very successful so let's hope it goes on well and uh, yes before we get started uh, yes thank you so much Arun for that confirmation that uh, the audio is fine so everyone who are joining in thank you so much for joining in here for the YouTube live of course, I need to keep in mind, I have to say YouTube and not Instagram Live or Facebook Live because that is what I keep doing. So here, uh, the main concept behind this YouTube Live is to try and interact with all of you and at the same time, try to be more active here on YouTube because uh, I strongly believe the YouTube community is more larger, bigger and more serious folks are here to learn photography and that is the main purpose of me trying to start my YouTube live as a part of my channel. So, and Raghavan everyone, I am doing absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, Vic, the audio is quite good actually. So, not sure if the audio issue is from your side. Uh, so, everyone, uh, let me know if the audio is coming through fine because like I'm using a direct microphone as you can see. So, the audio should be fine. Okay, so. And for everyone saying the audio is good. So probably like in your case, see if you can increase the volume a little bit. I don't know where you're watching it from, either from your phone or like from your desktop. Yeah, let's do a quick, uh, okay, so majority is saying audio is fine. Thank you so much everyone. Neeraj, uh, Sriram, then Kumari. Let's do a quick uh, count as to like how many of you are actually watching this from your cell phone. So just type in the comment section, cell phone or desktop. So depending on from where you're watching and then we will get started with the session. I'll give you a brief introduction and also I will probably like little bit introduce about myself as to who I am, what I do. Okay, so quickly you can type in in the comments to let me know whether you're watching this from cell phone or desktop. Okay. Okay, Clever Policy is from desktop, Gautam is from desktop, Prithvi, Shashank, okay, laptop, okay, fair enough. Uh, so, holy moly, uh, Nepal, I'm not sure whether I'll be visiting it. Oh, good. So, there's a huge mix of desktop as well as cell phone. So, I'm pretty sure from the desktop, you are having a much larger and a better view because I'm transmitting this in full HD, okay. All right, uh, so before I get started, so at a very high level, let me ask you, I assume that all of you who are joining this live YouTube of mine are basically photographers. So let me ask you this question. What is your number one challenge when it comes to your area of photography? Uh, it could be the technical things, it could be getting sharper images, uh, getting uh, not uh, good colors in your image, not good contrast. So it could be a combination of a lot of things. So in the comment section, why don't you type in and let me know as to like what are your main challenges when it comes to your area of photography. So I will be like watching all the comments. Okay. Uh, so, Sriram Ranthambore trip was absolutely magical uh, because like Ranthambore in monsoon, I had never seen it so beautiful. So, it's always the summer we visit Ranthambore for the tigers. But this time uh, it was so green and uh, totally different kind of images I was able to shoot. So, I loved the overall ambience of Ranthambore this time. Okay, so let's see uh, the questions. So, sharper images, okay. 
So, sharper image is one issue, image sharpness again. So, taking out time to go out for photography, so the area we <laughs> that is something we will work on. So, sharpness, wildlife photography, best lens for Nikon. A quick answer is the Nikon 200 500 is the best lens in Nikon for wildlife photography, the budget one. Efficiency in using a camera, okay. So, photograph focus is an issue, that is nice to know. Increasing ISO in low light in manual mode, okay. Uh, image sharpness, sharp image, sharp image, composition and losing focus in wildlife photography, okay. So, in your place, there is a national park or reserve, so there are community forest spotting, okay. Uh, so, I am trying to look at the issues what you face in photography. Handle, shoot and out of focus, image sharpness, sharp image, sharp image, sharp image, sharp image, <laughs> not getting sharp image, okay. So, this is a very good amount of information for me to get started with this session. Uh, of course, one of the thing is like uh, as we go forward, as I have more of these uh, sessions in future, so I will make sure like I will have focus sessions on specific topics. So, for example, like uh, image sharpness, so I will make sure I have a separate session only on image sharpness, okay. And uh, blur in pic, sharp image and composition, money issue in photography, sure that is definitely an issue for a lot of us, okay. Figuring out the camera mode, okay, cool, all right. So, I see uh, all the various things. So, let me get started since this is the very first session of uh, the YouTube live what I am doing. So, let me set a base for all my future YouTube live. So, I want to set this particular session as a base for all my future sessions. So, based on that, so what I am going to do is like let me share my very fundamental slide which I keep talking about every single time, okay. Let me switch over to that slide. Now, here this is one of my most talked about slide or rather I would say like uh, when it comes to photography, this is a slide you really need to digest. Now, based on my 25, 27 years of experience, I have arrived at what I call as this four pillars of photography, the four key important pillars of photography, okay. And uh, folks, uh, uh, quickly I am going to present about this particular slide I am showing and then I will definitely take up all your queries. So, currently I am not looking at the comments, not looking at the queries coming in. So, I just want to focus on this particular slide and help you understand uh, the importance of learning the basic fundamentals of photography where all these various questions which have come up right now, okay. Now, uh, so if you see here, the very first one is understanding subject knowledge. Now, based on the genre of photography you are into and even though like I am a wildlife photographer, this particular slide what I have presented is for any genre of photography. Now, if I go with uh, the first point which is subject knowledge or in wildlife we call it as like natural history understanding the subject behavioral aspects. Now, if I had to talk about portfolio, creating a portfolio of images say of kit photography, let me move away from uh, wildlife photography which is my main uh, genre. But uh, if you were to shoot a kid. Okay. So, of say one or two years, then if you had to create a portfolio, so you have your client who have a kid and if you have to go over there and shoot, the main thing which you have to keep in mind is when the kid basically sleeps, when the kid gets up. So, obviously, we know from a behavior point of view of the kids, when the kid gets up, that is when the kid is going to be really fresh and then as soon as he gets up, he starts, he or she starts crying because they are hungry and that is where again they need to be fed. So, sleep and food, once these two things are satisfied, that is when the kid will be uh, in their most happiest moments and that is when you can get your amazing images. So, as you can see with this simple example, it is more to do with understanding about your subject if you want to be a better photographer. So, that is the first fundamental rule, okay. I can give a lot more examples, but as I said, going forward I will have specific sessions in each of these pillars of photography, but currently I want to set a base. So, that is the whole idea of this. Now, going to the next one, if you look at the core fundamental concepts of photography. Now, all the various issues what you have talked about lies here. Now, image sharpness. So, if I have to talk about image sharpness, let me just take you through each of these concepts very fast 
and then I will come to the main issue what all of you are facing image sharpness. Now, the very first one is the camera related settings. Now, depending on what camera you have. So, I have my Sony Alpha 1 here with me. Now, depending on the camera, you have to understand that the very basic fundamentals of photography is based on few camera settings. <coughs> first one as you can see is the white balance which is going to give you specific colors. So, based on the kind of white balance you put, you get those kind of colors in your image and image. <coughs> Of course, uh, if you are shooting raw, you do not have to worry about this particular aspect. Now, the second one if you can see is exposure triangle parameters. Your entire photography is dependent on this particular scenario of exposure triangle and the exposure triangle of ISO upper shutters, ISO upper shutter speed is got based on the metering and exposure compensation. So, that are the next two points. So, depending on whether you are using spot metering, evaluative, matrix, multi-segment or even partial center weighted. So, depending on the metering, obviously like your exposure triangle parameters vary and based on the tonality, you will have to adjust your overall exposure compensation. And then comes the very important autofocusing. So, autofocusing points as well as the various autofocusing modes. So, this is important. Now, let us go back to the basic questions all of you had when it comes to getting sharper images. Now, one of the th very important thing you have to understand is image sharpness is not dependent on shutter speed. This is very important or rather image sharpness is not dependent just on shutter speed, but a combination of multiple parameters. So, the very first one is depending on the quality of the lens. So, your image sharpness is mainly dependent first on the quality of the lens. Of course, if you use a third party lens, any of the 55 to 50 lens, 75 300 zoom lens, majority of these kind of lenses, now they may not be able to give you a very sharp image. So, even if you want to understand about the overall sharpness of the image, then you also need to understand about the MTF chart. So, that is where the modulation transfer transformation frequency comes into picture. So, again I will have a separate session just for that. Now, after that like so depending on the quality of the lens, your image sharpness is directly related to that. Now, after that next comes the very important. Let me again ask you a quick question here. How many of you use a UV filter for your lens? Quickly let me know in the comments. How many of you use a UV filter and why? If any of you are using a UV filter for your lens, why are you using it? quickly type in and let me know and uh, yes, uh, all the various questions coming in, I will answer every one of them, every single one of them. Okay? So, my param zone saying you do not use it, then uh, Varun saying I do not, clever policy says no, Harvinder you are using one, get rid of it right away. Next who else? If any of you are using, so Kumari Pallabi that is good. No, I have never used Yamini, uh, that is nice to know. So, Deepu also you do not use a UV filter, very good. Uh, no, Arun, you say you use a UV filter to keep away dust, all right. I stopped using after watching my video. Arjun, thank you so much. So, I do protect the lens plus improve the quality, no. So, Addis uh, Abba, you are wrong, it does not work like that. So, Sovik, you use it to safeguard the lens, okay. Dr. Savik Basu previously I used, but as you said, no, I do not use it now. Good boy. So, Nikhil, no. All right. So, a lot of you use UV filter. Now, let me tell you like why you should not use a UV filter. Number one, UV filter has no role in digital photography. So, during our film time, we used a UV filter because the chemicals in the negative used to react to UV, light, UV rays. So, hence we use UV filters, but in digital photography, UV filter has no role and also uh, many of you said that uh, you use UV filter to protect the glass element. Now, the friend glass element in your lens that is the protective glass element. So, you do not need a protector for the protector, okay? it does not make sense uh, because like as I said the friend glass element even if it has a little bit of scratch, nothing happens to the image quality because you are shooting wide open majority of the time. So, with a little bit of scratches still there will be zero impact on your image quality. I mean it is not visible when you are shooting wide open. 
when you're shooting wide open. Now, beyond that, other thing is UV filter actually drops your image quality. The sharpness, what all of you have been complaining about, it drops by at least 40, 50 percent depending on the quality of the UV filter what you use. So that is where you should not be using it. Now, next comes the other very important technical reasoning as to why you should not use a UV filter. Now, if you take a long lens, okay, so a long lens has multiple glass elements, light enters here. Okay, so let me just go to a wider perspective to give this explanation. Okay. Now, the reason why I say you should not use a UV filter is like if you take any lens, it is basically a long lens what you have. Okay, so let me just quickly grab the lens. Uh, my autofocus is fine. Okay, now if you look at this particular lens, okay, autofocus, everything is fine. Now, as you can see, like the light, the light rays basically enters the lens from the front here. So the light rays enters. And then what happens is there are multiple glass elements within the lens. So the light rays goes through that and finally at the end here you have a body and uh, the light rays enters over there. So let me quickly do this also. Yeah, everything is on the fly so I was not prepared for this. Okay, now we have the complete body. So here as I said the light rays enters and then it basically like converges at the sensor. Now, what happens is like you need to understand that there are multiple glass elements. Generally, when the light rays hits the glass element, at least 5 to 10 percent of light gets reflected and so 100 percent of light never enters your lens. So only if 100 percent of the light rays converges at a single point at the back of the sensor or on the sensor, you have a 100 percent sharpness in the image. So you already lost 5 percent of the sharpness because 5 percent of light got reflected. Next what happens, the light rays travels through and there are multiple glass elements and then it passes through all those things. So then all the properties of light, refraction, diffraction, everything comes into picture. Finally the light rays converges or rather it is supposed to converge at one point of uh, focal plane which is your sensor. But unfortunately what happens because of the refraction, diffraction, all these things which happens in the lens, some amount of light basically the rays converges on the sensor, some in front of the sensor and some little bit behind the sensor. So this area of convergence is what we call as the circle of confusion. Smaller the circle of confusion, sharper your images. Larger the area, the circle of confusion your sharpness of the image goes down and this is basically primarily used to even come up with the MTF chart. Now with so much of basically like construction, glass elements, everything happens where the lens manufacturer tries to make sure 100 percent of light converges at that. Of course not 100 percent, all the light rays converges at that sensor point. But now with so much care being taken in the manufacturing, if you now put a UV filter in front, just imagine what is going to happen to the light rays. Another 10 percent, 15 percent may get reflected depending on the quality of the UV filter. And then the other rays which enters, already like there is first uh, glass element UV filter, so there is going to be more diffraction and also refraction from the glass element which is the UV filter. So the main glass element, the first glass element what you have before it hits that, the light rays which is supposed to come properly is already a little bit twisted. Now we can imagine what is going to happen to the circle of confusion. So if you can visualize, if you can imagine, this is where the sharpness of your image is directly hit because of the UV filter. Okay? And of course, uh, folks uh, who are just joined in newly and you are missing this explanation, not to worry, this live YouTube video will be available on my YouTube channel for you to always go back play and listen to this explanation. Hope you got the explanation. So depending on all these factors, the light rays converging at the sensor, the circle of confusion, all these things comes into picture and this is responsible for image sharpness, the other parameter. Now this is the main reason why I never encourage you all to use the UV filter. Always keep this in mind. Okay? So this is the second point when it comes to image sharpness. So let me 
keep this somewhere safe. Okay, let me just hold it for now. Okay, so first is the quality of the lens, second is or attached to that not using a UV filter. The third parameter is also which is the sensor quality. Okay, so depending on an APS-C, depending on basically full frame quality of the sensor, ISO performance, again image sharpness depends on that as well. Now, the third parameter, the other parameter is camera to subject distance. Now, if you are shooting a subject which is very, very far, even with uh, equipment like the 200, 600 or the 400, 2.8 and the 600 you can see in the backdrop, if the subject is very far, uh, then you cannot expect this subject to be crisp sharp if you zoom in 100 percent. So, the camera to subject distance also matters for your image sharpness. And then comes obviously the shutter speed. So, shutter speed does play a major role in image sharpness. So, especially if the subject is moving, you have low light or rather if you have low shutter speed, then again, so then again your image quality will get affected. So, slow shutter speed and there is movement in the uh, subject, it is going to cause blur and shake in the image. Okay? That is again another important factor. And again, after that, beyond that, another important parameter is your shooting technique. Okay? So, especially like when you are doing handled photography. So, one of the basic rules of the or a rule of thumb what they say is your shutter speed for sharp images should be 1 by the focal length of the lens. So, that is a well known formula we all know, but honestly I do not believe in that. So, what I believe in is your shooting technique. Okay? So, more than handled photography and 1 by the focal length, it is your shooting technique which is really important. And especially with the current generation uh, lenses where you have OSS or VC or VR or IS, all this the image stabilization technology which is incorporated in your lens or even in the body. So, handle photography little bit is more easy for image sharpness. But that said, one of the very important trick is handle photography, especially long lens, tuck it in, hold it really, really sharp. I mean hold it really, really steady. And then at the time of shutter release, so looking through the viewfinder, at the time of shutter release, you need to hold your breath. This is very, very important. Of course, do not try this for long exposure shots. Long exposure, you are not supposed to do it using handheld. Okay? So, if you see, these are all the important parameters when it comes to image sharpness. So, it is just not one particular uh, parameter which is the shutter speed as many of you think. Image sharpness is dependent on all these various parameters. Okay? So, as you can see like having a very strong understanding the technical aspects of photography is very, very important. So, hope uh, all of you like got an idea as to one why you should not use a UV filter and then the various factors responsible for your image sharpness. Okay? And yes, holding the breath for a uh, uh, time when you click the shutter release that is definitely very, very important. Okay? Let me just carry, uh, go on to the other part of the presentation. Now, so these are all the technical aspects. So, the camera related settings, so you need to get this really right. Okay? So, if you want to be a better photographer, trying to get past the current uh, scenario of your photography learning. Okay? On the other side, if you see, so that is where the visual settings composition comes into picture. So, your angle of shooting, the rule of third comes into picture. So, whether you are doing composition vertical or horizontal, that also matters. Of course, so these are all the wow factors. So, you need to get your foundation strong. Once you have that strong, then the composition elements comes into picture, which is the primary thing. I mean like the left side what you see, that is not photography. Real art of photography starts after you get your camera settings right, which is on the right side, which is your composition. Okay? Now, on the other side, if you see, uh, so, Shivang, sir, ISO performance of camera also affects sharpness. Am I right? Yes, you are absolutely right, uh, uh, Shwetang. So, ISO performance does have a major impact on the image sharpness, especially like when you use higher ISO, especially on APS-C cameras, your image sharpness will definitely be impacted. Okay? Now, uh, going on, the next question, if you, next part, if you see, so when it comes to composition, the distraction, so that is the number one reason for failure of the WAV image. Okay? So, that is something which you have to keep in mind. Then after that distraction, checking for background, you need to have complementary background and foreground. And then other, the most important thing is the direction of light. 
front lighting, side lighting, back lighting, diffused lighting, the one what I got when I went to Rantham board. So these are things which you have to keep in mind. Okay. And uh, finally, identifying those elements. So if you have a zoom lens, what kind of elements you have to include, what elements you should exclude. So these are things which you have to keep in mind. So identifying the various elements which become part of your composition. That is again very, very important. And then finally, it is more to do with the pre visualization or the journey of the eye. So that's the other point I've added. Now, when it comes to the journey of the eye, what happens is when you look at an image, okay, so your attention goes to the primary area of your image and then the eyes slowly goes around. So if there is a major distraction, look at the primary area and then eyes immediately goes off to the distraction. That should not happen. So the journey of the eye in the overall framing, what we call is like once it catches attention to the primary target in your composition, the eyes should explore the rest of the image. So it should easily go around and then come back to the main area. It should immediately should not go off. Those are distractions. So the journey of the eye also you need to keep in mind. And of course, the whole concept of pre-visualization, the last point is putting all these things together. In fact, all the pillars of photography come together and then the pre-visualization comes in. Okay, and then moving on, if you see the third important pillar of photography is understanding about your equipment and shooting technique. So I know my oval image is covering that part. So the third pillar is equipment and shooting technique. So understanding about your equipment and then the shooting technique. Now this is again where a lot of people fail. The third point which is understanding your equipment. Now take a camera like, so I'm currently here using the Alpha 1. Alpha 1 is a very, very powerful camera. Okay, so currently like this is the top of the line mirrorless camera in the world. Now, when you're using this camera, if you don't know its functionality fully, if you don't know its feature fully, especially the power of autofocusing, so the various aspects of autofocusing, if you do not understand, then it's as good as using this in complete auto mode. You pay like four lakhs, five lakhs, you pay for a powerful body like this, and you use it like an entry level camera in auto mode, then it's of no use. Okay, so at the end of the day, then you'll blame the, your equipment saying I'm not getting good images. So that is where understanding about your equipment is very important. And then the shooting technique. So shooting technique, I briefly talked about, especially for handle photography. Okay. Uh, also uh, shooting technique depends whether you're using a tripod, you're using a monopod or uh, in wildlife, whether you're using a bean bag or a panning pod. So there are so many accessories which comes. So shooting technique is equally important, which is the third pillar of photography. Now the fourth pillar of photography we all know is obviously post-processing. So the fourth pillar is digital post-processing. So all these things together compromises of what I call as the four pillars of photography. I mean like you may be in a position with amazing equipment, you get amazing images, everything. But if you don't know how to process it and present it to the outside world, then again your photography will fall apart. Okay, So that is where having a good post-processing workflow is equally important. So these are what I call as the four pillars of photography and you need to have a very, very strong understanding on each of these pillars of photography. Okay, now coming back, so this is a brief explanation what I wanted to give as a part of my very first introduction to photography here on YouTube. Uh, basically the live session what I'm doing. Okay, so let's go ahead. So let me now go ahead with all the various uh, questions which are coming in. I'll try to answer as many questions as possible and see like how best I can help you. And uh, Bupendra Singh, yes, this session, recorded session will be available on my YouTube channel right here. Okay, and uh, so to get started with photography is Nikon D3200 sufficient or should I buy uh, latest one. Okay, uh, folks, for all of you who are asking for the best camera or lens, so my request is please do visit my website. Okay, so sudhirshuramphotography.com. Let me see if I can quickly get it done. Of course, this is where technology comes extremely handy. Okay, uh, so let's quickly see if this is something I can work on. 
technology. This is where technology comes in. Okay, so. Okay, uh, I hope the audio is now coming. Uh, sorry for that. I just immediately connected my phone and hence the audio got uh, disappeared. Now, for all of you asking the best camera and lens to buy, click on this website sudirshuramphotography.com and then click on best camera and lens to buy here at the bottom, bottom of the screen, okay, bottom of the menu. And here you can select based on the brand, based on the price, based on the camera type, uh, DSLR or a mirrorless full frame or even uh, uh, cross type, uh, cross sen crop sensor and also based on the genre of photography. Yeah, this is better. Okay, so based on the genre of photography. Okay, and also if you come down here, I have given a quick specifications, the important specifications of the equipment and also when you click on rating here and come down each of these cameras what is displayed so for which genre of photography it is good that rating also I have given so this is an extremely useful database I have created completely like on my own effort I have sat and I have created this particular database uh, extremely useful and this is for the camera same thing like you click on the lenses the brand rating everything again same thing applies based on your budget it will give you all the various lenses for your genre of photography say for example let's see like uh, all the brand canon nikon sony all the brands so my price range is like say uh, up to 1.2 lakhs okay and i want to do uh, find a lens for wildlife photography i select that i hope it works yeah, there you go. So it will shortlist you only those equipment which fit that criteria and under Sony, then Canon, Nikon. So these are all the various lenses based on the budget what you have selected. And if you see, it will give you the star rating as I said, meant for the genre of photography. So this is extremely, extremely useful database. Go ahead, explore this. Okay, hope that helps. Okay, cool. I'm back and let me take up more of the queries. Okay, and sorry about that audio. Uh, I just immediately connected. The setup was not proper and uh, I missed the audio part. So, <clears throat> let me answer uh, more of uh, the questions here coming up. So, entry level DSLR, I answered that. Okay, uh, let me go try to take from stop can i take good wildlife photos from uh, a, a 7300 lens so harsh 7300 is an average lens depending on how good you are with your skills fundamentals of photography you should be able to take decent to good images from that particular lens okay screen not clear anup uh, i think now it's fixed 
so Harsh, I answered your question. Harsh, I answered your question, Dr. Raj Arora. So I have bought a Sony A1. It's consuming battery very fast, even though I switched off the monitor and it's on flight mode. Please guide. I shifted from A92 to A1. Uh, so Raj, uh, make sure like the wireless, all the networks, other settings, so everything you have turned off, the GPS or turned it off. Because uh, if you have configured wireless configuration or GPS, those things also will drain the battery. Okay. And uh, of course, depending on how much you use the view file or the LCD, there again the battery draining will happen. But honestly, uh, A1's battery will last very long. So in my case, one particular battery lasts an entire safari of three to four hours. Okay. So that is how good the performance, not only for A1, A1, A9, A9 Mark II, A7R3, A7R4. So all these mirrorless Sony cameras have fantastic battery life. Still, if the battery is draining out really fast, then my only advice is get it checked. Okay. Um, so Anup, so young enthusiast, but uh, what you can afford and start shooting. Uh, yes, that's right. So as I always keep saying, Anup, you're absolutely right. So the best camera is the one what you already have. Okay. So there's no better camera than the one what you have or the one what you can afford. Okay. So let's see, uh, Arjun. So I'm facing noise issues while doing long exposure photography while shooting star trails. Uh, okay. So Arjun, it depends on what camera you're using. So generally, like if you get more noise, it could be because of the entry level camera what you may have. So generally, the mid range and pro bodies you should not get too much of noise. And of course, even your ISO, what you're using, especially for long exposure, honestly, you don't need very high ISO. So it's about balancing your exposure triangle parameters. Okay, uh, so Harsh, I've already answered your question. Uh, so how to become a wildlife photographer? Very simple. Uh, the main thing is like, of course, a quick answer is you can join my online photography course for wildlife photography. Or the other one is like, uh, if you want to become a wildlife photographer, then there are various steps. So find out about the various parks around your house, okay, uh, or closer to your destination, wherever you're staying. So a lot of national parks, sanctuaries are there. It will have a website. Get onto the website, find out what kind of safari options are available if it exists. And also one of the best thing is directly walk in, go and talk to the forest department. So they are extremely cooperative. They will guide you with respect to tourism in that particular area, how to go about getting the permits, safari permits. So the forest department will definitely be quite uh, helpful. Go talk to them and take your camera, get going. So that is the best way to get started with your wildlife photography. Okay, so review on Canon EOS 200D. Ajay, honestly speaking, there is nothing called as a bad camera. So no camera manufacturer out there manufactures a bad camera. All cameras are meant for a purpose. So it purely depends on your skills, how good you are with your skills to handle that camera. Okay. Sir, uh, oops, oops, questions going in fast. Okay, so uh, it's Shwet, Shwetang. Okay, no, before that, uh, okay, that's uh, how to become a wildlife photographer. So how can we improve continuous focusing with Nikon camera? So Abhilash, again, the fundamentals of photography comes in where you need to understand the different kind of autofocusing points available. So what kind of autofocusing points there are the cross type, non cross type sensors or the dual cross type sensors, which autofocusing point to use and depending on your camera, what kind of grouping mechanism, uh, grouping mechanism is available. So all these uh, uh, basically like are important factors to understand about autofocusing and then your autofocusing comes into picture. Okay. Why do full frame sensors have difference in megapixels? So uh, Sri Chand, it's mainly because, uh, say for example, if this is my sensor, this is the size of my sensor, the amount of pixels it can hold is limited. So especially in case of a full frame, each sensor size, if it is larger, the photos, photo diodes, what we call, okay, so larger the sensor size, it can basically like absorb more amount of light, which means less amount of noise, okay. So the overall ISO performance which comes, so that is also dependent on the size of the sensor, each or size of the pixels rather, okay, in the sensor. So that is where generally full frame camera, they have basically more pixels over there or rather size of the pixel is more, less number of pixels, so less number of megapixels. So in fact, if you look at the Sony A7S3, it's a video camera, it is just 
12.3 or 12 megapixel because the full frame sensor has only so many megapixels. That means it is one of the best low ISO performance or high ISO performance, low noise performing, performing camera. Okay, so that is where the sensor size depends on even the pixels in that. Uh, questions, questions. So, Shwetang, so birds in flight, which entry level camera is it possible to capture? So, Shwetang, I will be very honest with you, a lot of entry level cameras will not have powerful autofocusing mechanism. Apart from that, even depending on the lens you use, that whole combination may not be great. Okay? So, that is where you need to keep in mind the limitation of the camera, especially for birds in flight. Okay, Lunkar, uh, your sound only come out of the left channel, not studio. I'm wearing headphone and that is bothersome. Oops, so sorry about that. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so is it still a problem? But I'll, I'll check because currently I'm using a mic for my audio. And of course, the broadcasting app, what I'm using, it should broadcast in studio. So I'm not really sure as to like what is happening, but that is something I'll definitely look into. Thanks for that. Okay, uh, Yamini, when it comes to post-production, what is your least recommendation where many would not be able to have proper Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom and a laptop to do it? So Yamini, I'll tell you honestly, like post-processing is one of the very important factors when it comes to photography. And also like if you do not have a high-end machine or Photoshop, even you can use some of the free software, but for to get a really good image out of your camera, a base image what we call, so that should be really good, which means your fundamentals in photography has to be really strong. So out of the box from the camera, the image you get has to be top notch where you can use very less amount of post-processing time on that or even post-processing tools on that. So that is the workaround work what I can recommend when you don't have a computer or even can't afford Photoshop or similar kind of applications. So Prithvi Alpha 7C for beginner, uh, yes, see these are all uh, good long term investment be it with Alpha 7C or the Alpha 1, A9, A9 Mark II. So all these are great equipment, it's a one time investment, so it's just worth it. Uh, so how to do low key wildlife photography? So Hirsch, the whole concept of low key is like there should be spotlight on the subject and the background in shadow. So that is the fundamental basic thing when it comes to low key photography. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So Judah saying you can hear me perfectly. Uh, folks, any of you using headphones, uh, hope you are able to hear it on both sides and not a mono one. Okay. So Shashank, same problem for you also, okay, questions, uh, so I'm missing some questions, okay, I'm just looking at the comments here guys. So can you tell me the best lens, so all the best camera, best lens answers I've already given, go to my website, you have the pointer over there. And yes Arjun, I hope to do more of these sessions going forward, okay, I'll announce in advance and I'll be doing it. Audio is clear, thank you. Uh, so Krishnan, uh, Krishna, 14 year old kid uh, doing fashion photography like uh, I think if you are able to get good images out of the D3400 just stick to that, no need to upgrade or change. You need to upgrade or change only when you find limitation with your existing equipment, otherwise not needed. Okay. Official Telbo, hello. Okay, and all the best camera to lens, all those things I've already conveyed. Uh, so in this COVID time, am I doing my photo photography journey? Uh, yes, I am doing it with uh, taking all the precautionary measures. In fact, I, I just concluded my Ranthambore workshop and I came back. So I had two one-on-one, one -on -one, so back-to-back -back two one-on-one -on -one workshops and then a personal trip and then again a group tour. So right from July 11th till August 2nd, I was in Ranthambore doing my workshops. And if you want to get updates, Two ways, one is sign up for my newsletter where I send you the announcements or you can keep a tab on my website sudhirshuramphotography.com. Okay, cool, any trick to do that I explained, uh, multiple exposure photos, uh, so in Mark III, so 
I think that is something I'll have to take it uh, separately about multiple exposure photos because Mark III I have to still study the settings. I still need to study that camera. Okay. Cool. Uh, there are a lot of repetition of the questions. Okay, uh, D5600 and Sigma15600 is definitely a great combination, a decent combination I would say to get started with your wildlife photography. Uh, no, uh, I am not in Ranthambore right now, I am back home. Okay, and also the best camera for beginners, best camera for this, visit my website, there is a good amount of data over there. And of course, uh, you are right, check my Instagram feed where I announce all these things. Okay. Okay, so you are getting audio only on the left ear piece. Thanks for that Ajay. Let me check my settings later to make sure like I broadcast this in uh, studio. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't want to make any changes right now while it is going on, but uh, definitely that is something I look into. Okay, cool. All right. So, uh, I just wanted to keep this session for one hour. As I said, this is my first intro session with all of you. And going forward, I will be doing specific sessions more so with respect to uh, targeted topics of photography. So, go ahead in the comment section, go ahead tell me like, okay, what are the different topics of photography you would like to see. Uh, so, I will do separate recording and upload it here on YouTube or for that matter as a part of this YouTube lives, I will be doing it. Okay, So, go ahead mention in the comment section and I will go through the comments and I will take care of it. Okay. So, all right, uh, and uh, yes, I do have my online photography courses. Please do visit my website sudirshivramphotography.com or for that matter, even I will update the description of this where I have my online photography courses via app as well. So, you can download my photography learning app and you can learn photography from me. Okay. So, more about all these things as we go forward and yes, Harsh, I can speak OK OK Hindi. So, going forward, I do plan to have sessions in Hindi as well. So, I know there are a lot of Hindi speaking folks here who may not be able to understand and follow English very fast. So, I plan to have Hindi sessions also here. My Hindi is not that great, but definitely I can communicate. Okay. So, all right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining me folks. So, I am going to end the session here. So, this session will be available for playback. Thank you so much for joining and looking forward to more of these kind of YouTube live sessions right here on my channel. Thanks. Stay safe. Take care. Good night. Bye bye for now.